India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has opened a temple in the northern state of Uttar Pradesh. The shrine was built on the grounds where a mosque stood for centuries before it was destroyed by Hindu right-wing activists. Alex Baird reports. A long-held dream of India's Hindu nationalists becoming a reality. A temple dedicated to Lord Ram, one of the most revered deities in Hinduism. And with it, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's Bhartiya Janata Party, the BJP, fulfills a campaign promise it made three decades ago. Modi is not going to lose a single opportunity to try to sell the accomplishment of having built a temple. The construction of the more than $200 million temple, which began in 2020, has been contentious. It's built on the site of the Babri Masjid, a 16th century mosque demolished by Hindu right-wing activists in 1992. That led to nationwide communal riots that killed at least 2,000 people, mostly Muslims, and bombings in the city of Mumbai. More than 30 years later, India's current religious fault lines still lie here. Temple politics has resonated with India's majority Hindus, who make up nearly 80% of the country's 1.4 billion population. In 2014, they elected Narendra Modi after he promised to build a shrine on the very spot of the site of the demolished mosque. A decade later, he made it reality. The temple's inauguration comes months ahead of national polls, as Modi seeks a third consecutive term. Most opposition politicians are boycotting the ceremony. They accuse Modi's party of exploiting religion for political gains. While the party is yet to launch an official election campaign, Modi's supporters believe the Ram Temple is a promise fulfilled. The Hindu people definitely think that there was someone who brought up this issue and made it, and perhaps the public should reward Modi. While some Hindus celebrate, many Muslims across the country are on a self-imposed curfew. They fear attacks and violence. For our Hindu brothers, it's a good day. But what about us? Those of us who were ruined, of course we'll be in pain. On that day, our father was killed and our mosque was demolished too. Critics say under Modi's leadership, the religious divide has only widened. Some 200 million Muslims, India's largest minority group, live in fear as second-class citizens. Muslims have been lynched over allegations of eating beef or smuggling cows. Muslim businesses have been boycotted, houses bulldozed, women barred from wearing headscarves in some educational institutions and mosques set on fire. But Modi has maintained silence. There is a fear that this government and all the affiliates, they want to wipe out all traces of Muslim or Islamic civilization from the country. The fanfare around the Ram Temple is being seen as a victory for the Hindu nationalist movement. And as Modi seeks a third term, it's raising concerns that he's cementing his legacy as the leader who can transform India's secular democracy into a Hindu nationalist state. Alex Beard, Al Jazeera. OK, let's get more on this with Sanjay Kapoor. He joins us from New Delhi. He's editor of the Hard News magazine. Thank you for joining us. Firstly, tell us a bit more about this temple and its significance. I've heard it being described as the new Vatican for the Hindus. Is that a fair description? Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, Ayodhya means, uh, especially this movement, means far more than just elections. It seems to be the coming of age for Hindu India. It is not just uh, Hindus in India who are celebrating this entire BJP's network. The ecosystem it operates has first seen that Hindus all over the world are actually looking at how this entire temple has come up in the last uh, 10 years, as promised by Prime Minister Modi. And uh, elections are incidental because I think what Mr. Modi has been able to do is to change the nature of India from a secular, constitutionally mandated secular India into a Hindu India. And it will become a very irreversible thing, even when you have election and for strange circumstances, if the BJP loses and Congress comes to power, it will be very difficult to change the order of things that have been unleashed today. I remember many years ago when the Babri Masjid was brought down in 1992, 
there was a gentleman who was the editor of a newspaper and he started crying and he said India is not going to be the same again. That time I did not realize that what it really meant. But today uh, and, I can say And what say does it mean? What does it mean? I mean, it, 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 to be, it's, uh, you say that uh, Modi has pulled India away from its secular foundations. What impact has that had on, say, minority uh, communities? So, as uh, your, uh, the, your correspondent said uh, just a short, short while back, uh, the minorities are most uh, uncomfortable with the idea of what has happened. Uh, they think that uh, the so-called divide between the Hindus and Muslims is going to increase. The voting, the votes are going to become irrelevant because primarily Indian secularism was also sustained by the kind of influence the, Hindu, the Muslim votes had over the outcome. They used to uh, ally with the other backward and other oppressed classes and vote, uh, vote out whoever was in their reckoning. But with the BJP's entire policy of uh, putting all the Hindus in bracket, you must remember Hindus are about 85 percent of the population. So there is nothing that the Muslims with a very small percentage of votes can really do or, or change the order of things in the, in the, in the society. Is basically uh, a very Hindu constitution. It's a very Hindu society which is going to emerge out of it. Not the constitution. Constitution remains unchanged. I said that wrongly. Uh, the Hindu society would probably dominate the politics and every other thing. What is also done to other political parties has become a touchstone for deciding how they should conduct themselves. And uh, they are not in a position to oppose very much. And they may not like to attend the program today, but they have said it so many times that Lord Ram is close to their heart and they will come whenever they feel like it for the temple because I the religion does not involve inviting people over to come and come for the ceremony. Uh, you were referring there to the opposition parties who I believe are staying away from the opening of this temple. Can you explain in a little more detail why that is? Primarily because I think they recognize that this is not just a Hindu uh, religion event, but it's basically the BJP's party event because you have the prime minister who is not supposed to be involved in consecration. It has to be done by the Brahmin, the, uh, the priestly class. And you have, if you look at the uh, the list of people who are there doing the, during the ceremony, is the BJP uh, chief minister from UP. You have the RSS chief the uh, the uh, parental party organization of the bjp the totally right wing uh, entity and you have many others who all belong to the uh, so called hindu hindutva parivar that's the family of the hindutva and uh, they don't want to give legitimacy to this and at the same time the bjp wants that if they come and uh, present themselves they would be endorsing not the bjp but the hindu uh, rise at the moment, which has happened, especially with the uh, coming of age of the warrior king, Lord Ram. So there is a visible conflict which is available, which is visible at the moment, okay. uh, with the opposition parties not really keen to give legitimacy to whatever is happening now. They may yes. believe in Lord Ram, but they don't want to care. Okay, I understand. Okay, thank you so much for your analysis. Sanjay Cooper Kapoor speaking to us there from New Delhi. Thank you so much.